Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another episode of the Podcast Strikes Back. My name is George and you're listening to our weekly show, Top 8. And we're going to be talking about all the big news to drop this week. With me to break down these stories is Connor. Zach. And Benny. G'day. I didn't change your name this week, damn. <laughs> um, guys, busy week, lots of news, but before we get into that... What have we been watching, Connor? Two things I've been watching. One was uh, I finally got around to watching Creed. Yes. It was one of those movies that, that has been on my list for a while because everyone was saying that it was really good. I ended up watching it. I, I really enjoyed it. Um, I find the boxing genre to be a bit stale. I still enjoy them, but uh, I mean, kind of at the back of my mind, I always think they're a bit stale. And this one wasn't anything new, but it was well, you know, well executed, um, well acted. I think it was a cool way to do a sequel to Rocky. It was. And relate him into that story uh, in a new way. And, you know, this has thrown Sylvester Stallone back in the mix. He got a he got a nomination at the Oscars for this, didn't he? Best Supporting Actor. Yeah. Yeah. He was amazing in that movie. He was really good. It makes me forgive him for Rocky Five. <laughs> what was his last one? Rocky Balboa. Rocky Balboa. Which Thank you. Good. Um, it was all right. All right, we can do a whole whole episode on the ups and downs of the Rocky franchise. The Rocky franchise, actually, I'd be I'd be down for that because I mean that I, when I say that the rock uh, the um, boxing's a bit stale, that's kind of just Rocky. <laughs> just, Rocky is like the the top for boxing films. The other one I watched, well, I've been um, rewatching Community, um, which is the Dan Harmon um, six season slog of a of a TV show. Lots of ups and downs there. It does have its peaks and valleys. Yeah, I've never delved into it, but I've always heard about the troubled production mm-hmm. history of that show. Dan Harmon's fired, or Dan Harmon's back again. Yeah. yeah, it. I mean, for me, that show is kind of the height of TV shows. It's really kind of encompasses the best of good TV shows, and then at other times, really kind of falls flat. And that might be because at those moments of greatness, it is so great um, that everything else just kind of feels bland i think that's what it is I, I watched through the whole thing again last year and i came out of it just tired and upset i think yeah it's it's a long thing to get through especially with it being so varied and, and it dies slowly it dies a slow yeah <laughs> and and just because of the nature of the property as well just because of the nature of the show mm. um i think because it's so varied and it's so meta it can get very heavy as, heavy or sluggish or, or kind of thick very quickly I'm not sure how to to kind of chuck that on the back of the DVD case. Very thick, very quotes. thick yeah. <laughs> and muddy and soupy and dense and dense and yeah. But yeah, that's what I've been watching. How about you, George? Uh, I chucked on Underworld. Yeah, again, <laughs> really cool. It's a good. It's a good one. It's a good one. It's <laughs> it's uh it's interesting how influenced that film uh, was by the Matrix. From yeah. the sound design to the slow mo action sequences to the, the leather. leather, I was about leather. to say the leather. The leather. <laughs> but on so many different levels, it is really similar to the Matrix. With it's kind of like Matrix and Blade combined. But I, I love that genre. Those mid two thousands sort of, uh, you know, mid Schlock. budget. <laughs> yeah, you know, like a sort of forty fifty million dollar budget. Mm. They don't really do those anymore. You know, your Hellboys, your Underworlds, I, and I really like that B movie. Yeah, uh, with a little bit of production. Um, kind of style but nowadays you know it's either 10 million or it's 200 million yeah i actually i revisited this as well this week um funnily enough but i was actually surprised by the budget or the value that you got out of this film um i thought upon rewatching that it would be very dated um and i i still really enjoyed it i thought it was surprisingly good they had a lot of fast editing to cut around those uh yeah. <laughs> those werewolves <laughs> but yeah you know it's a fun film and it's a little bit of an examination on how far we've come in terms of vfx uh, in you know 10 15 years yeah uh very much so benny did you chuck anything on this week uh, have you boys seen uh, citizen kane <laughs> i have yeah very long yeah. time ago long time ago i own it on blu-ray i need to i've been meaning to pop it on for a while is that a movie you need in, in blu-ray absolutely Definitely. yeah totally um no i was just asking because i just i've been wondering why are you watching Underworld again, both of you? <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be some some blind spots in history that are worth watching more than that. Uh, anyway, I haven't seen Underworld, so whatever. Um, no, I actually haven't been watching much this week except the Thor Ragnarok trailer again and again and again, but we'll, we'll get to that later. Yeah, all right. So let's get into the top eight of the week. Yeah, let's do it. All right. So number one, unsurprisingly, is the new Star Wars trailer. Oh, they released a new trailer, did they? They did. Um, I haven't. I mean, it's really kind of low key underground mm. stuff, but mm. 
Um, it's out there. <laughs> How dare you talk about Star Wars <laughs> in that way? <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> well, let's, let's take a step back here, Georgie. You're the Star Wars guy. What a teaser. Um, unload your brain. Very economical trailer. You know, they really focused on the relationship between uh, uh, Ray and Luke and the island and the training. I loved it on every level. Ryan Johnson is bringing a whole new flavor to the Star Wars franchise. The opening shot in particular. What, a, what an amazing shot. I wonder if the film is going to even start that way with that transition from the stars into the, the rocks mm. on the island. Money shots in particular were the the sort of helicopter shot with Ray spinning a lightsaber around and Luke with the high ground, you know. <laughs> Shortly after that bit, he chops her legs off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I, it's, there's just so many things to talk about with this trailer. Uh, I, I loved it on every level and I'm super excited for the, the film. You, you're back in after, uh, after Rogue One. <laughs> I think this is a true testament to why I love Star Wars and I really do love the, the myths and legends, the, the hero's quest element that the original trilogy and the prequels had mm. that Rogue One didn't. Mm. Rogue One was very military-based uh, and this one's right back into it. The Last Samurai was a big influence for... Um, Ryan Johnson in this he said in multiple interviews I can see that we can unpack this trailer you know if you want to get into it an unpacking video uh, <laughs> podcast we can do that um, but yeah what, what did you guys think um, I think the most striking thing for me was the um, the score really really well 100%. done 100% yeah I thought it was really um, a good mix of the themes yeah it wove them in very nicely yeah, and it gave the kind of it gave the scale and and the epicness that uh, I imagine that they're going for for this um, for this film. Um, it's something that was drastically different from Rogue One because Rogue One, as you said, was a little bit more self contained, was a little less kind of on that epic scale of things. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that's kind of an indication of of where this film will go and and how it'll feel. Um, I mean, apart from that. There, I don't know that they that there was too much to this trailer, which I like in a teaser trailer. Um, I don't like it when you know trailers give too much away. Um, so yeah, I thought this was a really, really good amount just to kind of peak interest, give you a bit of an idea of of what we're going to see. Obviously, I'm, I imagine we're going to see um, Ray and Luke kind of on that island for a good chunk of the beginning. I really don't want to cement my role as like the Star Wars grouch or anything. No, we need that, man. We need it. Fuck it. No, I, this trailer didn't do too much for me. I mean, yeah, it, it looked great, and the, I really did like the music as well. But um, yeah, I don't know. I I guess I read a lot of speculation stuff, so I've I've kind of assumed that Luke is going to be all about ending the Jedi or finding a middle ground or whatever, because kind of everyone's kind of been on that theory for a while now. So that didn't come as a surprise. I know a lot of people are freaking out about it, uh, for better or worse. But uh, yeah, so with that in mind, it just it was just very, you know, we know exactly where Ray is. We knew she was going to be there. Um, Finn's just still asleep and recovering. It seems we saw Poe running around a bit. Kylo Ren looks pissed off. It it really looks like the status quo from the end of the last one, which is fine. But uh, I I don't think this is a standalone trailer. This did quite what uh, that original Force Awakens one did, which I still think as just its own little thing is just an amazing little two minutes. Yeah, with the uh, Sarlacc Pit score, um, John Williams reappropriated that for the the Force Awakens tease. That was that was incredible. Yeah, wasn't it? yeah, 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 amazing. Um, even the the you know Han Solo bit at the end, notwithstanding, because because that didn't like blow me away, but the, just the trailer itself and all this amazing new imagery. Um, yeah, I don't know. It was fine. I'm still very keen for this movie. Love Ryan Johnson. Yeah, in terms of like surprises, this didn't bring much to the table. Nothing at all. Really, the only surprises was seeing what people are hypothesizing as being the Journal of the Wills, which is that mm. book and that bookshelf. Mm. So, we're going to be delving more into the mythos of the Jedi. I may be wrong. Have we ever seen a book in a Star Wars film before? Uh. <laughs> there, there was a library, but it was all hologram. Yeah, hologram. Yeah. That'd be very interesting. <laughs> I, do, I do enjoy it when, when movies of this kind of scale and, and this kind of uh, shared universe type delve into like uh, mythos and kind of things that have happened before and... That really excites me. I, I understand what you mean. Like, I, I'd be very interested to see how bold uh, Disney is going to be with this in terms of ending the Jedi. I know it's called The Last Jedi. I know mm. he comes out and says at the end, you know, the Jedi should finish or whatever. Um, and I'll be interested to see whether they, whether they go through with that. 
So I think the my theory behind that is that Luke is saying the dogma of the Jedi needs to die. Yeah, it's going to be a cop out. They're still going to be running around with lightsabers using the Force. He's just going to oh, be, yeah. oh, we're not technically Jedi. It's going to be the Knights who say nee. It's that we're no longer the Jedi. <laughs> <laughs> Kylo Ren is now part of the Knights of Ren. He's not a Sith. Mm. You know, the yeah. Sith were there was a master and apprentice. There was only two, yeah. uh, and now the Knights of Ren. There's like ten of them. Yeah. So. The light side will be name something else and have a different set of values and rules. Yeah, they'll all, they'll all, they'll all become grey Jedi. Yeah, but I even wonder like if they're Sokotano. if they're even <laughs> brave enough to do that because mm. I mean the 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 name Jedi and that imagery is so much a part of Star Wars and and there are fans out there that are really 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 attached to that name and that even if you say even if we call it a dogma, um, it'll be interesting to see if they go through with discarding that branding essentially is essentially what it is um or if they kind of do a bit of a cop out it could just be a plot point or a conflict point where he's he's not sure about the dogma and then ends up saying well we do need the jedi because x or y or whatever it happens to be i mean another way it could go following on from that is that luke thinks that force sensitive individuals are too powerful. His experience with Kylo being trained as a Jedi and then going to the dark side. Well, as well as his father. Yeah, exactly. So maybe in his mind, you know, the Jedi needs to die, the Sith need to die, everyone needs to die. Force-sensitive people brings havoc onto the galaxy. That would be very dark. <laughs> gonna be- he's going to become the villain. Uh, who knows? <clears throat> yeah, it's definitely been thrown about. Yeah, I think that there's a lot of uh, potential with this and where it goes and, and how he approaches that, um, which does make me excited. Um, my, yeah, as I said, my biggest thing is, is how brave is uh, Disney going to be with, with that plot point? If this uh, movie is as slavish to uh, Empire Strikes Back as The Force Awakens was to A New Hope, the mouthful, um, I'm going to be very pissed and, um, yeah, I'm going to be, I'm going to tap it's out of this the series at this point. Strikes Back of the Star Wars films, <laughs> but not the actual. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we saw in this trailer, we saw the, uh, on Crate, that new planet, mm. uh, those rebel sort of skimming ships. Taking on the AT-AT sort of things, yeah. yeah. But if they're not AT-ATs. They're apparently more gorilla-like and bottom-heavy this time the around. The AT-4X, <laughs> I believe. Oh, Good God. sir. Good yeah. sir. <laughs> it's not the same thing. <laughs> it's bigger. Up. <laughs> um, but they're taking out a base, trying to take out a, an important base on crates, which is very similar to the big, the Battle of Hoth. Yeah. I don't mind it. Bring it on, Brian Johnson. In Ryan Johnson, we trust. Ray's going to lose a hand. Yeah, I think that was. I mean, that was one of the biggest criticisms of the Force Awakens was that it was far too similar to Episode Four, um, A New Hope. But I was kind of okay with that because, um, as it was explained. It was kind of done on purpose because you, get me you want riled to, up again, Connor. Yeah, well, you want to kind of bring back that that story. You know, if it's not broken, don't fix it. It was like a sequel boot, a C boot. Mm. So yeah. it was rebooting C-boot. the franchise, reintroducing that a New Hope storyline, uh, whilst continuing the story and establishing a new Star Wars for a new generation. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get in another fight about the Force Awakens. I'm so sick of fighting about that movie. So I'm going to leave it in the past. And, and yeah, I'm just saying, though, if they do it you again with this one... You cannot run from this, Ben. I can. I can run all my life. If they do it again with this one, then, yeah. If they just copy it. Yeah, I would like to see a, a new direction taken with this. I don't mind that they copied the first one. Um, I'm totally down with that. I would like them to see, branch off to a new, uh, a new direction. A new hope. A new hope. <laughs> hope! <laughs> uh, one final little thing that Daisy Ridley dropped at the uh, Star Wars Celebration Last Jedi panel... Uh, she mentioned that people were saying, are you Ray Skywalker, blah, blah, blah. She said, no, 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 no. But I can drop one little cool little hint, which was um, when she meets Luke Skywalker, you know, the process of meeting your hero is not always what you want it to be. So uh, That's I not think, interesting. Yeah, it is. I, think it I, is. I mean, I have a feeling that they'll do this whole thing where he's going to be the reluctant mentor, which is not new. Yeah. It's not original. I think that's it's cool. not anything. Yeah, he's a goddamn hobo on that rock. Yeah. <laughs> I, I like it. I feel like that's like almost it. too easy. Like he's going to be like, no, I don't want to train you. I've, I've left that life behind. And 
I mean, they almost have to do it, but that in no way excites me. I think in, if it's presented in an interesting way, maybe if you write it down as a plot point on a piece of paper, yeah, maybe it's not that interesting. But if it's done in an interesting way, and I think Ryan Johnson is the guy to do it in a really compelling way, bring it on. Look, if he attacks her, then yeah, okay, uh-huh. I'm down with that plot point. But otherwise, it's it, it's not bad. I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying it, it's to me that is not an interesting plot point because it just seems so predictable and just so kind of status quo for what they've set it up to be. I really hope he rides around on her in a backpack because because <laughs> because like he literally doesn't know how to teach her otherwise. It's the only way he ever learned. <laughs> Just running around on his pupils' backs, be like, "This is how Last I was taught." Know. Yeah, imagine how great that would be for for leg day, you know? Yeah, no, I'm down with it. Um, all right, moving on no, to I'm down with it. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll do it. Yeah. yeah, I'll probably watch this new Star Wars. Yeah, I'll 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 get behind the it. Star of the War. Um, all right, second one is probably an equally as exciting trailer nah, for people. Plays. Nah. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. So much more exciting. <laughs> Um, the new Thor Ragnarok trailer, hey. um, which is, I believe, the most watched Disney trailer ever. Yeah, it was at, uh, a couple of days after it came out. I don't know if Star Wars has taken over that yet, but I don't think so. Probably, <laughs> probably. You know, we're, we're a big deal. Yeah, this <laughs> thing went absolutely viral. It's, um, I think, because it became the the biggest one just before that, didn't it? And then this, there's a lot of properties that are coming out that are just really exciting if nothing else but for the name and the the idea of them mm. and also the way the facebook video mechanic works like after three seconds you get a all view right. so all uh, right, all right. <laughs> your way to build up views uh you know youtube has gone down a lot and facebook way more video traction anyway taika watiti what an amazing choice to bring him on board as a director for this franchise and it doesn't look like he's being too manhandled by yeah. uh, the powers that be at Marvel. Yeah. Immediately you get a sense that this is a, a drastically different flavor than the other Thor films. This ain't your daddy's Thor. <laughs> <laughs> what? What, that, that, what? That's just saying. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was so confused by that. I was like, what are you, what? No, I mean, your dad specifically, his version of <laughs> Thor. Did <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> No, yeah, this looks like um, nothing we've seen before in the Marvel Universe even, except for maybe Guardians a bit. There's a lot of that in there. So, yeah, this is my main concern, and I wasn't going to get into it so soon, but I'm going to jump right in. Mm. My main concern with this is that it feels a little bit too much like Guardians of the Galaxy. Not much of a concern, though, is it? Well, I, I think it is because I like Guardians of the Galaxy because it feels like Guardians of the Galaxy, and it kind of feels separate from the... Um, the kind of mainline Marvel universe that we've seen so far. And while I'm really glad that this feels different than that, I don't want it to just be a copy of Guardians of the Galaxy, if that makes sense. Fair enough. But at the same time, I think Thor is where the whole space comedy thing started with the Marvel movies. Like they were doing it first. As as a space comedy? Yeah, totally. Like Thor is, the Thor movies are much more a comedy than I think most of the other Marvel movies are. I feel like we have a drastically different feeling of what a comedy is. I, I watched these about a year ago, both of them. And from memory, the first one had a lot more gags and the second one was a little more sort of epic Lord of the Ringsy. Sort of. There's still a lot in there. You know, you got like Cat Dennings and... Um, of course, yeah, yeah. that Irish comedians in there. It's like, it's a lot of just goofy shit. Oh yeah, the dude which, from the IT crowd. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chris, Chris O'Dowd. Yeah, Chris which, O'Dowd, yeah. that's it. So I think this... In a, in a way, it feels like even an evolution, like just pushing it further. Yeah, which which I hope it is. I hope it's just taking um, a bit of a fresh kind of take on it, moving that comedy forward. Um, but yeah, the the one of the things that did strike me was that this was eerily similar to I like that. Guardians of the Galaxy. I think it was a cool way to tie those two franchises in with each other because we do have Infinity War coming up and Guardians of the Galaxy are going to be in Infinity War. So, you know, Thor, his... His space exploration has always kind of been a little more Lord of the Ringsy, like the um, the ice planet in the first one, mm. um, and then the the elves, the dark elves. It's it's more had that sort of myths and legends, fantasy mm-hmm. kind of feel. And this one, it was more tech based. Uh, we had that sort of junkyard uh, planet. It seemed to be making connections there and setting that up for Infinity War. Yeah. yeah well, the the. Some of the rumors are stating that uh, Kate Blanchett's character, who looks awesome, Hella, um, is going to turn out to be kind of the MCU's version of Death. Yes, um, Thanos's lovely girlfriend. In the comics, Thanos's whole like 
taking on the universe and finding the infinity stones is prompted by his love for death and yeah. his uh, infatuation with death. He's a, he's a bit of a sweetheart, old Thanos. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's, it's really, it's all just a very big love story. Yeah, to kill billions of people to try and win her heart. How mm. great was her um, antler design yeah, yeah, yeah. in that one shot? Yeah. Very cool, yeah. The entire the entire look of this trailer, like the the colors and the the costumes so far, by miles seem the best that I've seen in a Marvel universe so far. It just seems, I don't even know how to describe it, just very colorful and very kind of out there. I thought it looked very uh, green screeny, a lot really? of it though. Yeah, which the first time I watched the trailer, I did. I've watched it several times since then. It's kind of grown on me more, but hopefully that all gets uh, cleared up a bit more by November. Mm-hmm. There was the, I think it was um, the shot with um, Jeff Goldblum. Mm. Uh, and that that particular scene in that office space, the composite job for the green screen didn't look that great. Mm. He looks awesome though, Jeff Goldblum. Oh yeah, his, his actual uh, makeup yeah. looks fantastic. Like I get the feeling that even if it looks like this upon release, I'm not going to mind too much. One of the interesting things um, was right at the beginning of the trailer, um, he does a bit of a, a fourth wall break type yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I wonder if that's going to be kind of carried out throughout that film or if that's going to be a theme in the film. Uh, I hope they do do that as a framing device because that would be unlike anything we've really seen in a in a Marvel movie. It'd be cool to see them kind of break the format a bit like that. Definitely. Yeah. It's it's something that I think in the Marvel universe would normally have been taken care of by Deadpool as that kind of Yeah, yeah. Cuz yeah. I know that Deadpool's in the uh MC or the um Marvel comic book universe because <laughs> i know things he's learning I know things he can be taught <laughs> finish, but finish because he's now with fox <laughs> nailed the second one Ten points for gryffindor he's been doing his homework Very good. um i knew all this i think i'm being like pigeonholed into like not knowing shit um <laughs> you, you you are being pigeonholed into not knowing shit because that's <laughs> that is what you are <laughs> it's bullshit um yeah look i, th- I think that that this could be a cool opportunity to um, enter that into this universe and in this series. Um, and then imagine if Thor just keeps talking at the camera in like <laughs> Avengers movies and stuff. <laughs> That's his new shtick. Yeah, like he, got, he gets hit on the head or something at some point in this movie. <laughs> and then all the other guys, like Captain America's looking at him like, what is, why do we have this guy around? <laughs> Who is he talking to? You're lucky you're strong, buddy. Mm. I particularly liked the whole 80s kind of aesthetic they're going for this with the... Um, uh, the graphics at the end. Mm. Mm. I, I love that design. I love that flavor. It totally matches what they're going for in the film, it seems. That was the thing that made me connect with Guardians of the Galaxy, make it feel like I don't want it to... Because, again, that was... Guardians of the Galaxy's thing was the 70s, 80s rock music mm. kind of aesthetic. And we've been talking about about that a lot recently, is all these trailers using that technique. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah, yeah. And... I was thinking about it the other day. I was like, Where, who started this? Who was that? And it was Guardians of the Galaxy that started that whole thing. Mm. Marvel are tapping into that amongst their fran- franchises. Going full circle to Guardians of the Galaxy 2. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> I hope Star Wars The Last Jedi do one. Hey. <laughs> Hell yeah. I don't quite feel like that would fit. <laughs> I'd be into it. Led Zeppelin in the trailer. Hell yeah. I need a hero. <laughs> That's <laughs> not Led Zeppelin. Um, I am. Um... That's not Led Zeppelin? <laughs> <laughs> what? Look, I to be honest, if you put Zeppelin into any trailer, I'm going to love it. Even like a terrible Zeppelin song from one of their later albums, Post Physical Graffiti. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll listen to it. Um I'm I'm just I'm I'm a sucker for a Zeppelin fan. Um for Zeppelin, Zeppelin fan. <laughs> yeah, right. for, Zeppelin for a Zeppelin fan, fan I'm a sucker for you. All right, I, 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 what's interesting here is that we've talked this much about this trailer and kind of gushed over it without even mentioning the end of it, which is all anyone really took from it, I think. Oh, his his um, dialogue with the well, Hulk bit, the, Hulk, yeah. <laughs> the end. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't know what to talk. Like, how do you speak about that? Just it was cool. It was very funny. I bet it, it's it's like it's the piece de resistance of it the is, trailer. Yeah. Like, that's that's why it's gone viral. I think. I feel like it speaks for itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah no, totally. But I, I think that's cool that we've been able to talk about the rest of the trailer in a positive mm, way. Yeah, yeah. Just kind of focusing in on that. But yeah, that looked that was awesome. That you know that. Where he's a friend from work line. It just oh, yeah. it's so good. I really hope they kind of strike that tone throughout the movie. I got the sense that this was going to be a little bit more of a goofy film in that sense um, from the the marketing that they've released already. The team Thor. Team Thor and him and his roommate and stuff. Yeah. Um, Daryl. I, I was really happy to find that that wasn't just a marketing stunt before the actual film came out, that that kind of bl- uh, brand of humor will blend into the actual film, mm. um, which it seems as though it, it might and, and probably will. 
Yeah. I'm, I'm worried that people are probably too hyped for this movie because everyone is so positive about it, which is weird for a Thor movie. It'd be um, really bad if it sucks, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh, man. It's by far the most uh, hyped Thor film. Marvel, Marvel film, film of yeah. this year, I think. Like, every, everyone's kind of expecting Guardians to be cool again, but no one seems like too crazy. Like, it comes out mm. like, next week. Um, and Spider-Man, people are kind of divided on even. But, but this one, everyone's just like, yeah, Thor looks awesome finally. Um, I personally love both the, the first two Thor movies, but um, so I'm going to be an easy target for this movie, I think. But um, yeah, I, I worry that people are going to be a little let down by it. I, I want to watch you cry. Not me. No, I'm going to love it. Well, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm an MCU whore. You know me. Yeah. Civil War was pretty hyped up last year, though. Like to the same level, I would say. In a different way, though. In a yeah. different way, yeah. Within yeah. like Marvel fans, this was a very hyped up film yeah. for what it will do for the franchise. I feel like this one kind of transcends just whether you're a Mar- Marvel fan or not. It looks like a cool trailer and a cool movie in and of itself. I wonder yeah. why that is. I think it's everyone's been super psyched that Taika Waititi is Yeah, because everyone wants this. it to be Hunt for the Wilder People with yeah. Thor in it. Yeah, and but how many people actually know Taika Waititi? There's, you know, like I would say but 10%, I, 5%. Hunt for the Wilder People was. I think one of the absolute best reviewed films of last year. It got very popular. Mm. I like even in America, all, all the podcasts I listened to, everyone was recommending it. Yeah. Well, that was one of our favorite uh, films of last year. Yeah. Oh, totally. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that even just the trailer on its own, if you don't know who directed it, if you don't know what franchise it's part of, it still just looks like a fun film. Yeah. I mean, mm. it's, it's not relying on, you know, fantasy or sci fi to kind of push interest in it. It's just, it seems like a funny, uh, fun, exciting trailer for a movie that will hopefully deliver on all those things that we've seen so and far. And they nailed the essence of Thor. <laughs> the know? essence of Thor. The essence of <laughs> Thor. What do you know about Thor? His, yeah. his near perfume the line. Just everything that I've wanted Thor. Thor to be, I think, is promised in this trailer. Yeah. I'm I'm just I'm so happy for Australia's own Chris Hemsworth. <laughs> and Chris I, want, I want nothing but good things for this film. I really hope it delivers. Hemo, what a fella. What a fella. All right, let's move on. Um, no, but, let's keep talking yeah. about the <laughs> I feel like this is <laughs> this is why hour. I have to put my foot down because <laughs> we we put our foot down for the Star Wars because that Star Wars conversation could have gone on forever. Yeah, um, could have. George leading the helm. I feel like <laughs> this one could have gone on forever. Yeah. Then leading the helm, I, I'm going to put my foot down. Yeah, no, let's get keep into you guys it. in control. Right, now we're going to listen um, to Connor. On to number three. <laughs> on to number three. Uh, Josh Brolin cast as Cable, so not Brad Pitt. Not Stephen Lang, not Michael Shannon, Kyle Chandler. Always. Damn it, not Michael Shannon. I know we were. You were really rooting for him, but yeah. So the, this is the official announcement of, of who will be playing Cable. Thanos as Cable. Thanos as Cable. I love how every article is just like Thanos actor, but it's like like he's never done anything uh, else yeah. in his career. He's <laughs> played he's, Thanos for three minutes yeah. on screen. <laughs> But I mean, I was that's say, where's he? He's been in Guardians of the Galaxy in the throne mm. for about two and a half minutes, and then Avengers two, yeah, post credits yeah. scene. Yeah. Fine, I'll do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> he's been Jonah Hex for a whole movie, though. Whoa, okay. He's been he's been uh, Agent K for half a Men in Black movie. Uh-huh. <laughs> I mean, that's probably one of the biggest things that concerns me is that not even concerns me, it just weirds me out. Like, surely you could have found a different actor than the one that's already in the MCU. Synergy. <laughs> oh. Bring all your brands together. That just feels like lazy casting. We've already got him here. We might as well. No, but you can already imagine the the jokes that he's going to make in the movie. Deadpool's going to make about him being Thanos. Oh yeah, yeah. like that's going to come good. up. That'll be great. That'll be fun. I, I, I think I think he's a great uh, great casting for it. He's got that gruff toughness that um, maybe Michael Shannon didn't potentially have. Fuck you. He's um, Michael Shannon <laughs> plays gruff. Uh, like if you look at something like Sicario, Did or, you see Nocturnal Animals. No, no, Michael I'm, Shannon I missed in that, that man. one. He I, played this fucking badass kind of bounty hunter guy. So cool. Is that out yet on on the, the streaming platforms or I don't know. I, I must go check Let's that out. Let's look it up. Let's pause. Let's just sit here for two minutes and look All it right. up. I'm gonna look it up right now <laughs> as you guys keep talking. Um look, I I think that any of these options would have been pretty good as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, um, totally. I'd have been down with Michael Shannon. Um, I'd have been happy if Stephen Lang Brad wanted Pitt. it too bad. He seemed a bit desperate. Don't give it to him. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's such early days to kind of see how that will play out. Yeah. Um, but I, I like Josh Brolin. Yeah. I think one of the first times I saw Josh Brolin and he kind of got on my radar was True Grit, which as far as I was concerned was a really good performance of his. Yeah, yeah. Um, it shows that he has the range to pull this off. You hadn't seen No Country for, for Old Men? Was that before or after? Yeah, before. before. Was that before? Yeah. Uh, I mean... No Country for Old Men, I I really enjoyed. I thought it was really good. But Josh Brolin was certainly not the thing that stood out for me in that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, 
I think with True Grit, his was the probably one of the more interesting performances of that. The voice acting in that was proper good from him and uh, also uh, <laughs> Jeff Bridges. <laughs> voice acting? I don't know how you say it. Like his accent? It's not really yeah, an accent, accent, is it? His accent. The dialect. The dialect? It's not even a dialect, is it? His, his performance. Performance. <laughs> yeah, let's just put, put it in performance. His vocal performance was splendid and rather accurate to the period. Yeah. All right, <laughs> we've, we've rung this dry. Uh, um, he's playing a character in a movie that's not out yet. Yeah. But he's going to look cool with that big mecha arm <laughs> and... I, anyone will look anyone cool. Anyone will Yeah, totally. No, um, no. <laughs> no, just him. No. He's the only one. Um, all right, we can move on then. I think we've probably killed that one. Number four uh, is the new Transformers trailer. Yes. <laughs> Back on board. <laughs> Man, Michael Bay. Uh, you know, after I saw the incredible trailer for Transformers 3 and what a piece yeah. of garbage that was, I said, I will never, ever, <laughs> ever ever be fooled by one of these trailers again, Michael Bay. And damn, did this trailer fool me. I am so pumped for this movie. Holy crap. I know it's going to be garbage, but that is such a good trailer. Mm. There's some really cool stuff in there. Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll pull it back a little bit. There's some really dumb, 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 dumb Transformers <laughs> stuff yeah. to be expected in this, but I'm really pumped for the King Arthur stuff. The medieval Transformers looked cool. I think I think if I walk out of the cinema about 20 minutes into this film, I think I will get a good little fix. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think this this film does what every other Transformer film does, which is look really really fucking cool in 20 minute little spurts. Mm. And it'll have some awesome action scenes which every Transformer film has. It'll have some pretty epic like, you know, feel to it which every Transformer has. Um, it'll delve into some cool mythos, which every Transformer film has. But at the end of the day, it will probably be what every other Transformer film is, which is absolute and utter shit. Yeah, I think that sums it up pretty nicely. Yep. I, th- I thought so too. Mm. I mean, I, I'm I'm with you. This is by far the best trailer that they've um, put out for this, this uh, Transformer 5. And I think I said last time that I don't want to see in an, another piece of marketing from this film. Um, and if nothing else out of this, I've I've gained a good trailer that I can look upon fondly <laughs> when when I when I'm utterly disappointed by this film. Um, I I really like that. Um, I was going to call him Megatron, which is fitting. Um, Optimus Prime seems to have finally completed his arc into full on villain, um, which it honestly feels like they've been setting up since the first film. Uh, you know, in the first movie, he was all. Uh, uh, you know, all sentient creatures deserve freedom or whatever bullshit. And then as it, they went on, he just kept getting crazier and more violent and more fascistic. He slaughters Decepticons like nothing I've ever seen on film. Like if they were organic creatures, these movies would be R-rated. Because like at the end of the third one, he flies down, he's got a sword for an arm and he's just chopping motherfuckers to pieces. Yeah. And he's so angry about it. You remember how he kills Megatron in that movie? He, like rips his face off. In uh, Insane. three. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is crazy. Um, so I I don't think they need this kind of whatever they're doing, turning his eyes red and making him possessed. I reckon they should have just made him, like that line of his, you know, for our planet to survive, yours must die. That just feels so Optimus Prime to me in this series. Yeah, he's pretty um, he's pretty marginalized in this one. <laughs> the fr- <laughs> What? <laughs> so, are we talking it's about so marginalized? <laughs> Autobot, Autobot. <laughs> Autobot racism now. <laughs> well, like, oh, we're just we're just deleting that. No, we are not. No, we definitely not. No, I mean like he's um, either really good or really bad. There was no transition yeah, yeah, yeah. in between. I feel. You know, well, I mean, I, no, I, I think he's been he's, he's been looking like a villain for a while. now. He's been ramping up towards it. Um, but I, I I think yeah, it could be an interesting little conflict. I hope um, there's a twist at the end where it's like. All right, we got to. He's not possessed anymore, and he's like, "I was never possessed." <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, that shot in the trailer with uh, <laughs> Kate Yeager, <laughs> with Kate Yeager, <laughs> and Optimus coming down with that knife as he's protecting Bumblebee. Bumblebee. He dives in front of Bumblebee <laughs> to protect him. <laughs> yeah. I would love what if that was how Kate fuck? Yeager died. Just gets <laughs> splits, and everyone looks at him like, "The fuck did you think was going to happen? <laughs> Why are you on that giant disc <laughs> fighting with these?" Thirty foot. I, I love the idea that you know in the original trilogy that they tried to make like Shia LaBeouf um, relevant, and in this one they try and make Mark Wahlberg relevant, as if they have any place among fighting robots. I mean, like mm. 
what what are you what are you gonna do? I mean, you can have your little side adventure, but don't get in the middle of fighting <laughs> robots. You're you're just fucking useless. Nah, mate, Cade Yeager, he knows what's up. He, he does. He'll, he'll smash a brew in the middle of a scene again, <laughs> hopefully. Jeez. <laughs> uh, all right. Yeah. All right. So yeah, we're in agreement. This movie's gonna be shit. Yeah. <clears throat> good trailer. Yeah. Good. Good trailer. <laughs> but the the actual movie is gonna be shocking. All right. Next on our list, uh, there was an announcement that Jude Law has been cast as a young spunky Dumbledore. Mm. Spunky Dumbledore. Spunky Dumbledore. Related to Albus Dumbledore? This sucks. Sucks? What? <laughs> no, seriously. This is Fantastic Beast 2, right? He's going to be playing young Albus Dumbledore in Fantastic Beast 2. To be honest, I know he's been cast in, in this kind of universe. I don't know if this is the specific film that he's coming out. I'm pretty sure they're bringing out five Fantastic Beast films. Yeah. yeah I, don't, I don't know if we know yet if they're all going to be Fantastic Beast movies. or I would like it. I, what I've seen people do is like make one of the movies, each one of the movies, a different textbook title. Right. Obviously, that's one of the books from the series. I think that'd be cool. Quidditch Through the Ages was another one. Yeah. yeah. So I think, so one of the things that I've, <laughs> I, I'm a h- massive Harry Potter fan. Um, You're not that big. Of the, of the books. L- a little bit less so of the movies. I have to like distance myself, like I make those two separate things. Um, and then when Fantastic Beasts came out, everyone absolutely shat on this movie. So I'd never ended up seeing it because I didn't want to really? be disappointed by this film. Are you kidding me? They, people loved it. It made eight hundred thirteen million. That's not that's not too much for a Harry Potter movie, though. For a spin-off film. For a spin-off, yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, but well, no, this is interesting. So you haven't seen it still? I still haven't seen it, and I think one of the biggest factors was I believe it was you, George, that came out of it just saying that you absolutely hated it, and I um, walked out of it. Yeah, that all right? Yeah, that was the statement that made me really nervous. I've walked out of two movies in my days. One was Prince of Persia. Fair enough. And the other one was Fantastic Beast. You're so hot and cold, though, George. Like I find with <laughs> Like, you'll go see a 6 out of 10 movie and you'll say it's the worst thing ever made. I See, it, what I'm getting at here is you need to expand your test audience, Connor, because as George said, most people did like this movie, I think, and I really enjoyed it as well. I think now that the dust has settled, I, it was maybe a bit forgettable, but um, I really enjoyed it at the time. All right, well, I'll, I'll, I'll go have a look at it then. I thought it was absolute bullshit. Uh, I couldn't believe David Yates was churning it out, that kind of film, after the pedigree and... F- <laughs> amazing track record he had in the last half of the Harry Potter films. This is what I'm talking about. I think I think Fantastic Beasts and the last Harry Potter films, there's not a big difference in terms nah. of quality there. And you're like, worst movie ever, best movie because ever. Because I don't give a shit about Newt Scamander or whatever the hell his name is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Eddie Redmayne. You no, know, you, know you got the name right. You know, you, know, you, you know what you're talking about. It, like, it just, nothing compelled me about this film. Mm. Nothing drew me in. And I was like, I'm out of here, man. I don't need to watch this. Mm. I have the Harry Potter films. I love those. I think it's an amazing franchise. So you're not coming back for any more Fantastic Beast films? I mean, we'll have to review it for this podcast. So I will so go you see gotta it. See him. You got to catch up mm. on the last one as well. The more you talk about this, the less convinced I, w- I am that that actually was a shit film. <laughs> go watch it. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I I will then. No, seriously, go I mean, watch I mean, it. I mean, I, I, no, right, right now, <laughs> get out. Where's right the Blu-ray now, player? We're gonna watch no! it right now. I'm gonna watch you cry. <laughs> um, no, fair enough. Anyway, um, the actual news story. <laughs> what the actual news with Jude Law. Um, look, it'll be interesting to see um the direction that they go with this. Mm. Um, this is obviously going to be a very young Dumbledore. Um, you know, comparative to how he's portrayed in in um. Mm-hmm. the original movies. I think they can really do anything with this, mm-hmm. to be honest. Um, That's the scary part, man. <laughs> well, it's scary and it's not. Like, I mean, the, it kind of gives you that sense that there's no um, limit to how they put this story together and how they weave it into the universe, which means that it could be utterly crap or it could be really good. I got the impression with their whole talking about the five film arc and stuff that they're going to move very quickly away from this, this Newt's Commander stuff. Um, because that's they're, they're talking about they're going to go into the Great Wizarding War and everything, which I can't imagine he has a huge part in. Um, and I think this series will become very much about Dumbledore and Grindelwald. I'd be down for that. That I mean, that's such a cool that was one of the biggest um, not regrets, but one of the biggest irks I had with the the last two Harry Potter films was that they never really mentioned that relationship between. Um, Dumbledore and Grindelwald, mm. which was such an epic part of the books and such an epic part of the story. I thought that was such a wasted opportunity. Um, so if they dive into that, I'm 100% down. I reckon that'd be sick. I just hope they keep... Because uh, two people played Grindelwald in the last film. I hope they 
keep up that trend of switching. Of just switching at every film, because <laughs> I, every scene. Well, you you know who, who played him in the last one, right? Um, there were very sh- uh, short scenes, weren't they? Yeah, essentially. I, I, maybe there's a spoiler stuff. Who really cares? But um, the current actor, I think, needs to change. <laughs> if you if you're gonna watch the film, we won't we won't say. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think one of the cool things about Dumbledore is over the arc of the Harry Potter seven stories is he's portrayed as this uh, incredible um, otherworldly man, like a wise old man who you could go to for anything and he'll be there for you. And as the franchise progresses, you get to know more about Dumbledore and you see that he actually has a troubled past and he he keeps secrets Mm. and he's maybe not as great as you once thought. Uh, and he is a flawed character in some regards. Mm. And that's what I love about that story. And now delving into the same thing that Rogue One did is like over explaining things. Mm. Like, do we really need to see this? There's so much density there already. I think you missed the much more obvious Star Wars comparison, which is Darth Vader. Yeah, and the, the prequels. prequels. Perfect. So Perfect I, example. I 100% disagree with that. Well. Because because you like to see shitty stories explained, <laughs> yeah, cool. No, no, because no, no, no. Right. Great, actually, you like to see great stories portrayed in shitty films. <laughs> no, 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 no. Wait, shitty wait, wait. directors. Because what you're talking about is the story that you get in the books. None of that. None of that uh, Dumbledore arc is really explored in the films. It's, it's a, such, a bit. It's a bit, it it's a bit it but is. it's so lazily done. It's that not lazily done. It's they've, massively lazily they've, they've, done. Listen, there's only two hours, two and a half hours. You can present all that information from a 700 page book. Like you have to make. Cut. They had two films to do it. Two fucking films to make one of the major arcs of that last book. I didn't realize you guys are so passionate about Harry Potter. (laughs) No, sorry. This is one of my biggest irks about the original films. I like the original. This is why I have to separate the books from the the films because it makes me fucking angry that one of the greatest (laughs) arcs in that entire fucking franchise of books is dealt with so sloppily in the films. They they give a like a ten second spiel on that entire arc, and they're like, "Well, they, Harry Potter just looks up and goes, well, I trust him,' and that's it. That is such utter fucking bullshit <laughs> to take that arc and put it into ten seconds of shitty, lazy, stupid fucking dialogue." Okay, that's a specific thing, but I think the character of Dumbledore and his exploration is handled quite well in the films compared to the books. Completely disagree. Alone in the films, I will agree with you because I love the books as well. The movies will never compare to the books. Yeah, yeah, all right, but. If we then look at just the <laughs> just the movies, I think there's a ton of area to explore with that character. Then stuff I don't that wanna, I don't you got wanna. in the books that you didn't get in the films that they can now kind of. How is this our biggest disagreement? <laughs> <laughs> and how am I not involved? I can't believe what. Are we gonna we gonna rein this in? We, I don't, have we even mentioned Jude Law? Like, have we even <laughs> said just anything got about Jude? Out of control so quickly. I like Jude Law. I think he's gonna great, make a great young, very tanned. Um, I kept Dumbledore. No, I that's kept that bullshit. Yeah, Jude Law is Dumbledore. Bullshit. Get out of here. Pushing my buttons. All right, we're gonna move on before this gets nasty. Yeah, we're never gonna bring up Harry Potter again. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> Let's do a top five Harry Potter films. <laughs> Jesus, I'm putting Fantastic Beasts in there. Yeah, yeah. Put put a number one. Five, yeah. Nah, mate. <laughs> number nah, four is mate. last. Um, Azkaban, mate, Azkaban. Wait, as the worst? As the best. Okay, right. I was like, are you just trying to make me angry? <laughs> um, oh, fuck. All right. Uh, number four. Or sorry, number... Holy shit. Moly. This has just gone... <laughs> All right, number six. The new Atomic Blonde trailer has come out. Wow, you saw that with a lot of passion, huh? Sorry, I'm just like... <laughs> We're really <laughs> excited about this one. <laughs> Look, let's stop talking about these fucking kids' books and get, get back to comic books, please. Uh, Real important stuff. Uh, is this based on a comic? Is um, this based on a comic? <laughs> <laughs> I believe oh, it, yeah. George. I'm the idiot, George, that doesn't know what properties belong to which. I don't, I don't know. I know literally nothing about this film apart from what I've seen in the trailer. Um, and all I know is that it looks like John Wick on steroids. It looks fucking awesome. Yeah, based off the graphic novel, The Coldest City. Mm. Oh, wow, it is. There you go. Yeah, so cool trailer. Yeah, very cool trailer. Cool, mm. again, cool music. Yeah, yeah. Um, cool very cool, scenes. very cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah very cool. <laughs> they, yeah, they really uh, doubled down. There were well, like three cool songs in this trailer. They're just... Yeah, they're, they're looking around at the trends and being like, we really got to step it up. Let's get <laughs> three of them. Let's go <laughs> shuffle mode. Boom, boom, yeah. boom. <laughs> 70s to like early 90s playlist, shuffle go uh charlie Theron is kicking ass in this trailer uh i loved her in fast eight our review will be up on tuesday 
I thought she did an amazing job with that. Very, very interesting villain. I said uh, to Connor when we left the cinema, um, she, you know, we haven't really gotten a good villain in a long time. Marvel lacks great villains. Rogue One didn't really have a good villain. You know, there's only really two things that I care about, which is Marvel and Star Wars. So we won't <laughs> think about anything else in this argument. But so I think she's going to do a cool job in this film. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I, I, I thought she, she plays that really like unemotional, um, like bitchy attitude type character really well. Um, it is what made her really good in F8. Um, the other one that I kind of think about is she was really kind of um, like ice cold in uh, the Huntsman movie. What was it? Snow White and the Huntsman. Yeah. Um, she played a really cool villain there. Just very, I guess, stoic or, or unemotional. Um, and it kind of seems as like that's bleeding into what I'm assuming is going to be a bit of like an anti-hero or just kind of very violent hero type film. Like, you got to assume Furiosa is what's what's kind of oh, got to the role. Oh, I did not <laughs> yeah, think definitely. of Furiosa. <laughs> yeah, what the hell, Jesus? Um, definitely. Yeah, the reviews have been a little mixed on this one, but uh, the trailer's pretty cool. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully at least it's like a cool action action flick. Yeah, I feel like this could go the other way very like very easily. Yeah, like, this could be very shitty, just relying on some action uh, scenes type film. Mm. Um, I think it's really hard to pull off some of those films. So John Wick was. Um, I think a surprise for a lot of people because it does have the general formula of just a generic action film, you know, kind of cookie cutter film. Um, and they had a bit of style to it and they had a bit of a, um, a twist to it that made it so successful. Um, so I think that's what this movie is targeting and hopefully they kind of are able to do that. Just side note, we still don't have John Wick 2 here. I'm so pissed off about yeah, how, that. What the fuck is with that? Very annoying. Anyway, next one. Yeah, fair enough. Number seven is Fede Alvarez uh, to direct Labyrinth sequel. Um, quick, yeah, uh, quick uh, admission from me. Um, I've never seen Labyrinth. Yeah, I've never seen Labyrinth either. Shit, boy. Wait, has, yes. no, has no one here seen Labyrinth? Come I was on, really you know I have. I was really relying on you two to have yeah. seen this film to carry this one. I saw Dark Crystal not too long ago uh, for the first time. Uh, and I've been meaning to put on Labyrinth because they're kind of like a little pair. Yeah, I would almost not recommend it to you two because you've got really bad taste in film. <laughs> no, it's one of those things I grew up with it and love it to death. Um, and I'm a huge Bowie fan, so that all, all kind of factors in. I think if you come at it you know, later in life, it's not going to work for you tremendously well unless you're a big fan of like puppeteering or... Um, yeah, which is well get Jim me. Henson stuff, yeah. yeah. like the, the production design is amazing. Yeah. The stuff they do and it's very cool. On a technical level, it's very easy to appreciate. And the yeah. the, Bowie, the Bowie songs are all fantastic and everything. I mean, I grew up on The Muppets. I grew up on Sesame mm. Street. Yeah. Uh, anything Jim Henson related other than Labyrinth, I was into. <laughs> yeah, so, cool. uh, yeah, all right. You might dig it then. Yeah. Do you, so you like Dark Crystal? Love the Dark Crystal. Love the Dark Crystal. All right. Maybe, maybe you get a little more out of it. And I love the fa- this world building in the Dark oh, Crystal. Okay. It's this other world, other place mm. that you've never been to before. Mm. It's fantastic. It has been a, a long while since I've seen Dark Crystal. Like that was one of those movies that I grew up with um, and then just haven't, haven't seen at least in 10 years, mm. 10, 15 years. I chucked it on and as Benny said, puppeteering technical level, mm. it is just a piece of art. Mm. Yeah. What he was able to do in the, I think it was the 80s, early 80s, they pumped Dark Crystal out. Yeah, anyway, in terms of a sequel to Labyrinth, um, uh, yeah, it shouldn't be done. There's there's no point. It's it's all about Bowie and Jim Henson. Both of them are dead. Yeah. Well, they, they've, they've confirmed that the Goblin King's not in this. Yeah, exactly. Which, uh-huh. so why bother? Um, it, th- this was a movie, this was like a bolt of lightning. It was It was written by Terry Jones from the Pythons. Um, it was produced by George Lucas, Jim Henson, obviously in there, um, and David Bowie. Like, you can't get any of that talent back, and even if you could, they wouldn't recapture it. It's of that time. Yeah, it oh, is yeah. such a, a cult hit, which means that people love it for reasons other than it just being good in a lot yeah. of ways. So, it, I don't think there's any way you could recapture any of that magic, and it really is magic. This, I mean, I, this feels like a movie that's. I know. I know all movies are greenlit in boardrooms but this feels specifically like it's greenlit in a boardroom this doesn't feel like it's a passion project for someone because i feel like anyone that has any real passion for this 
um, property will feel as you do, Ben, that mm. that kind of the the circumstances were just right to make this film and they made something amazing out of it um, and that trying to recreate that or recapture that magic is going to be a bit well, folly, essentially. Have they said if they're going to be doing practical effects or not? I mean, is this going to be sticking to that Jim Henson technique or is this going to be... Of course they're not. No. <laughs> I mean, go on, look at, look at the last 20 years of film. No way. If that if that's the case, then I think this is an even worse move. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I I just left that without saying because yeah, I don't know. Uh, but again, I think they because this for me, this feels like a, a decision made by people that just want money out of this. Um I feel like that might be something that they do because that's the, in my head, that's the kind of decisions that they would make. Be like, mm. oh, people love this film at a time and they loved it because it was puppets. So let's just chuck puppets in it. Presu- See, I honest, actually think maybe this could be a passion project because I don't know why anyone re- would revisit this property so much later. I don't think there's a lot of money in it necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, and in that sense, I think they, they probably would involve Henson's workshop and you know try and do puppet stuff, but it still wouldn't be at the same level as they used to. People don't make productions that practically anymore yeah like some of the sets in that original just insane like they built cities mm. and you know a labyrinth <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah. um yeah look as i said i haven't seen it so. don't do it moving on yeah fair. um so final number eight dolph lundgren yeah. has been cast in aquaman joining a stellar cast yeah. stellar cast yeah so N- nicole kidman uh, as queen atlanta atlanta Atlanta. Atlanta. Oh, fucking mm-hmm. final. Um, but there's also, like, there's actually a really stellar cast in this. So there's Amber Heard, Patrick Wilson, um, Willem Dafoe. Jason Momoa. Jason Momoa. Now, this is um, a relatively new character that Dolph Lundgren's playing uh, in the comics. But I think this makes the third villain uh, in the, the Aquaman film. Now, because you've also got Black Manta, who's been cast, and uh, Ocean Master, who is uh, Patrick Wilson. Um, I, right. I don't know if all of them are confirmed to be in this film specifically, but uh, they're yeah, they're really strapping in for some Aquaman goodness. Yeah. Again, this is not something that I have a great deal of knowledge on. Um, I, I love all these actors, apart from Nicole Kidman, who I have an irrational hate of. Um, uh, but yeah, which makes me excited to see the see the film um, based on that. Mm. But apart from that, it means relatively not, nothing to me. I think it's hilarious. Dolph Lundgren is amazing. Yeah. I want this whole movie to just be about him <laughs> under the goddamn sea. I think he's a good uh, uh, counterpoint to Jason Momoa. You know, two ocean-based <laughs> six-pack <laughs> beasts. Of, does of beasts does of Dolph Lundgren still have a six-pack? Um, maybe a CG one. Yeah. Um, but, you know, a like, PhD, I think. Yeah, and like electrical better, engineering better than, or something? Than a six-pack. Or chemical engineering? Yeah. But yeah, he's a good he's a good counter. He, you know, he's got the size to uh, combat Jason Momoa. Really <laughs> scraping the bottom of the barrel for this one. <laughs> Compared to Patrick Wilson, yeah. I think uh, I think Jason Momoa would cr- crush him. Yeah, it's funny actually. Patrick Wilson um, is already playing the president of the United States in the DC universe. Is he? Is yeah, he? he's only he's only done a, like a short voice role. Oh uh, yeah, saying I, like fire the nukes or some some bullshit. Oh, but yeah, so he's. See, all the bloody studios being fucking lazy. We've already got him on the payroll. Let's just <laughs> so Ocean sign Master him up. is also the president, president of the United, United States of America. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Yeah, nice. I like it. Maybe they will do that. That'd be taking cool. the source material and adapting it to the big screen. <laughs> Fun little twists. Uh, fuck that. Oh, well, I think that's the top eight of the week. That is the top eight. We've done it. We've made it, guys. It's kind of like the top five, and then a few other things. <laughs> yeah, it kind of ended up like that. But we've got a few honorable mentions. The uh, first one is uh, some rumors around the Shazam thing. It's still in production, according in the to DCEU. The Rock. Into the D- DCEU, yeah. Um, but he's playing Black Adam. Yeah, the, that's the Rock, weird, yeah. I, that, that name makes me very nervous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like saying it. <laughs> like, oh, I feel wow. like, is, is this racist? Is, <laughs> that what, is that what's happening? Is he black? Or? Yeah. <laughs> um, oh, God. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. No, no. There's, that's such a non-story for me, which is probably why it's in our honorable mentions. And he might be uh, the villain in Man of Steel. Oh, that or Shazam was, yeah, that might was the other be. thing. Yeah, no, 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 no. Black Adam. Black Adam. <laughs> I'm so confused. Black Adam I'm so confused. <laughs> might be a villain in uh, Man of Steel. Man of Steel and that's too. the Rock. A villain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the next we'll one was a uh, new trailer for Baby Driver. 
it seemed like most of the most of the same stuff yeah. as before. Look, still looks cool. Still looks cool. Very, Very cool. excited for it. Just nothing really new about it. Mm. Found this little gem. Apparently, the original writers have been hired for a Coming to America sequel. We can only hope that it never happens. Yeah. Again, it's just something that shouldn't be revisited. Yep. <laughs> um, not 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 overly cool for that. Um, and then George, you're probably best to talk about this. Was um, the there was a couple of things that came out of the Star Wars celebration. Yeah, I am. <laughs> but I'm going to limit you to like bullet points. Uh, so Rebels is finishing after season four. Cool, I like that. That brevity. It's going to be a little more serialized. They said, which is interesting. Mm. Cool. Carrie Fisher will not be appearing in episode nine. Confirmed. Confirmed. Okay. Mm. Good. So she's going to die in eight. Confirmed. Or well, she doesn't have to die. She's going to die in eight. Maybe man. she's just like, I'm done with this shit. Y'all fuckers are on your own. Uh, was there anything else to come out of Star Wars celebration? I feel like you did. You still miss Star Wars guy. Uh, the panels were great. Mm. Uh, Hayden Christensen was there, which I yeah, really liked. That 40th year uh, Star Wars panel was particularly good. I urge you to go watch it. Mm. Um, had uh, you know George Lucas, Mark Hamill, Harrison Ford, mm. Anthony Daniels, uh, all of the rest. David David yeah. Pr- David Prowse was he invited this time? <laughs> <laughs> um, one one last thing I would like to mention about this is. Ben, I don't know if if you've noticed this, but George has been making some pretty serious claims about (laughs) something that was going to be coming out at the uh, celebration. Some financial claims. Yeah. I I believe you put some money on the fact that there's going to be some standalone news in this. Did I put money on it? Hundreds of dollars. I feel like you did. show me. We don't have time for that now, George. We don't (laughs) have time for that now. We don't have time for the facts. But we do know that you were making some pretty bold claims, money money notwithstanding, about some standalone film news. Yeah, we didn't get it. Complete lack of standalone film. Mm. But I think think that's a good move from Lucasfilm. I I don't think they they want to really ride out this teaser trailer. If they had announced uh, a standalone film on the third day of Star Wars Celebration, it would have um, sort of muddled. Mm. that whole release and that that wouldn't be until what like 2020 anyway yeah something like that 2019 uh you you know what just Who long knows? enough for people to forget rogue one mm. and it'll sucker punch you again uh, but everyone seems to love rogue one it irritates I'm, see me. I, I know like <laughs> really irritates we, we all me. say this like we all bag the shit out of it and then when we're really asked about it be like what do you think about it oh it's fine that's good yeah that's my problem with it. that's why <laughs> no, i never want to see no it one really has like when you get into the nitty-gritty of the film everyone f- will fucking fillet that thing but i'm amazed that anyone has strong opinions about that film one way or the other it's I, are you really that surprised is it a star wars know, film yeah, where yeah, people no, I know, I know. are highly invested what and if you want to hear our opinions you can go to our rogue one <laughs> review which is on itunes and youtube i think that's it for today yeah yeah we've done it we've done it nailed it well done guys another nailed week it. done Guys, you can find us on iTunes. You can find us on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button. Comment below. What do you think of all these stories? You know, is Dolph Lundgren going to be kicking ass in Aquaman? That's what that's people are going to be coming to. That's, that's the headliner. <laughs> that's the headliner this week. Uh, we will have our um, Fast 8 review up on Tuesday and a review for Colossal, which was a cool little indie flick uh, with uh, Anne Hathaway up on Thursday. Once again, an absolute pleasure to have my crew with me, Connor. <laughs> Bye. <laughs> so, I was going to say something so, again. So, so mean. And uh, Benny. G'day. All right, thanks, guys. Thanks.